Okay, good evening. Your microphone. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, I was telling you, it was uh, hard to be in class last night or because uh, internet issues, but now I'm okay. Ah, that's good. That's a, a good news. And I was having a lot of trouble yesterday too, but today is going very, very well. It's, it's raining here, but not much. So I have a in class today. Yeah. Uh, here it's also raining, but now it's kind of uh, light uh, rain. But I think it's going to be okay. I think. A bit. And you were talking about um, present continuous, right? This night? Yes. yes, the topic is present continuous, but uh, we were talking about the different type of birds that we have. But in this case, we are not talking about regular and irregular verbs. In this case, we are going to talk about three different types that are the normal verbs that it was mentioned in the use number one of the uh, present continuous. Uh, the group number two is the non-continuous verb. And the number three, that was the last thing that we were saying yesterday, it's about the mixed verbs. So we have these three different type of verbs when we are talking about a present continuous. Um, okay. So we're going to continue with the other verbs that we were uh, learning yesterday and I will explain something about the verbs that we were saying in the previous class. So let me share this one and this one and this one. Okay, we were saying that we have three different types of verbs. Um, different than the regular and irregular verbs that we have, uh, that is very common that, that we have in the simple uh, tenses, but in this case, we are going to have uh, the normal verbs, that are the ones that we use uh, with many, many um, structures, that is this one. That is such that in this case, uh, we use uh, the normal verbs to talk about this one. Here. In this case, the normal verbs are talking about physical actions or physical things that we can uh, see someone doing or performing. And we have here the example to run, to walk, to eat, and all of that thing. Then we have the non continuous verbs that in this case is like. Mm, we are saying and that in this case we cannot use it with a continuous sentence because it's not like we are going to change the form of the verb. So in that case, it's why we call non-continuous because we are not going to add the ing form of the verb. And we have different types that are the abstract verbs, the possession verbs, the emotion verbs. And then we have the group number three that are mixed verbs that is talking about uh, the, uh, the translation that we can uh, give to this kind of verb. So, uh, yes, one is this. so, in this case, it's talking about that um, depending on the use that we are giving to this kind of verbs, we are going to have or a normal verb or a non-continuous verb. Lo que tienen estos mixed verbs son que dependiendo del momento, dependiendo del contexto en el que lo estemos utilizando, o puede ser un verbo normal o puede ser un verbo no continuo. In the case of that we can not use it with the continuous, with the eh, eh, continuous tense. And we had the examples here. We had to appear, that is the one, the first one. And it says, Donna appears confused. In that case, we are using the verb in present. And the explanation it says, 
dar she seems confused. En el primero, como no es algo que nosotros vea, podamos ver físicamente, o sea, no es algo que alguien esté haciendo físicamente, como correr, bailar, comer y todo eso, entonces no eh, es un verbo, en este caso, eh, es un verbo no continuo, porque no podemos agregarle el ing a esa situación. ¿Por qué? Porque Dona luce confundida. No es que nosotros lo veamos haciendo algo, ¿verdad? Exactamente como pues, en los otros verbos. And in the second one, it says, my favorite singer is appearing in the jazz club tonight. Mi cantante favorito va a hacer una presentación en mi club de jazz favorito. Entonces, va a hacer que una presentación va a, en este caso, cantar. So, in that case, it's a normal verb and we can use the ing form of the verb. Then we have the second one that is to have. In the first one, in the non-continuous verb, we have I have a dollar now. Tengo un dólar. Pero no estoy diciendo, estoy teniendo un dólar. En este caso, es un non-continuous verb and we are not going to use with the ing form. And in the second one, I am having fun now. Estoy teniendo, estoy divirtiéndome ahora. In that case, we are doing something. Maybe we are dancing, we are singing. We are doing something to have fun. And the third one is to hear. And the first one, she hears the music. Ella escucha la música. And so I was thinking I will not have problems with the internet, but Okay, I can hear something, but I can see anything. So it's that kind of weird. And I don't know if you are listen to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was thinking I will not have problems with the internet because it's not raining like really hard, but in my phone, in the place that I live, uh, it's kind of hard to, to use the internet in this situation because it's like we have a lot of trees. And it's kind of complicated, but we're going to try to end the session. So I was saying that in this case, we have this kind of uh, verb that we can use with both um, meanings. We have both meanings, the normal verb and the non-continuous verb. So we are going to end the part of the three uh, kind of verb that we have with this structure because we have to me and, and now we are going to have to see that we have some kind of examples to smell to taste to think and to waste so we have uh, some of these examples left to end the type of verb then we are going to continue with the present continuous and the uses that we have for that structure so we have this one that is to see, and we have the example. We have example number one, and we say, I see her, but in this case, it's non-continuous. And it says that I see her with my eyes. I am seeing, I am not performing. So in that case, it's a non-continuous verb. Then we have, I'm seeing the doctor.
Okay, I'm too so sorry for that. I don't know what's happening. It's supposed that I have all of the of the connection, but it is not working well. Okay. We are trying again. So in the second one, we have normal verb. That in this case, it's like we are going to the, the doctor and we are going to have a, con, uh, um, like a day in this case. Eh, cuando tenemos I'm seeing the doctor, estamos hablando de que vamos a ir hasta el consultorio. <coughs> I'm sorry. To have uh, like a, uh, something to do with the doctor. Like we are going to have a test or something like that. Then we have another one that is, I'm seeing her. But this one is also a normal verb. So in this case, it's, it's, I'm having a relationship with her. In este caso, cuando uh, decimos la estoy viendo o, o me estoy viendo con ella, eh, no es como que ah, solo nos estamos mirando. En, en este caso, estamos utilizando esta frase para decir que tenemos una relación. Ah, es que nos estamos viendo. O sea, tenemos un tipo de relación, estamos tratando de iniciar una relación. Then he's seeing in golf at night. So at a night. And this one also a normal verb. So it, uh, it says that he sees something others cannot see. And we have like in the previous one that is to hear that someone is hearing something that others cannot. Because in the last example in to hear is she is hearing voices in her head. So in this case, he is seeing ghosts at night and nobody else can see this kind of vision that is having that person. Then we have to smell. And we have the sample. The coffee smells good. In this case, we have a non-continuous. Because in this case, it's like the coffee has a good smell. In that case, we are not uh, smelling. It's the, uh, the smell of the coffee. Then in the second one, we have, I am smelling the flowers. I am doing something. I am performing the action. I am smelling the flowers. So in this case, it's a normal verb. Then we have to taste. And we have the first one that it says the coffee tastes good. Again, is the, um, the flavor of the coffee. We are not doing anything with that. So now I'm continuing. And the second one is, I am tasting. I am tasting the cake. In this case, we are doing something. That is tasting. Move over. Then we have to think. In this case, pensar. And we have the first one that it says, he thinks the test is easy. And you know that the first one is non-continuous and it says he considers that the test will be easy in that case. And in the second one, she is thinking, she is thinking about the question. So, 
Eh, es bastante simple si sí, nos ponemos a pensar en el hecho de que eh, los verbos no continuos eh, no tienen que ver con las acciones que nosotros realizamos. En muchos de los casos, pues, no estamos haciendo un esfuerzo físico eh, para realizar este tipo de oraciones. Porque tenemos, el café huele bien, el café sabe bien, pero no es porque nosotros estemos haciendo algo con el café. O sea, no, no, ni siquiera lo estamos eh, bebiendo, no lo estamos eh, probando. So, in that case, eh, no es un verbo normal, porque no estamos eh, realizando nosotros la acción. En el caso de estoy oliendo las flores, obviamente yo estoy haciendo una acción, que es oler. Estoy probando el pastel. Estoy haciendo la acción de probar. En el ejemplo de to think, he thinks the test is easy. No es que él esté pensando en realidad. Él está considerando. Él cree que el examen va a estar fácil. No está haciendo la acción de pensar, de detenerse a, a tener muchas opciones. Pero en el segundo sí, porque dice she is thinking about the question. Ella está pensando acerca de la pregunta, de las posibles respuestas que puede tener. Entonces, los non continuous verbs son aquellos que no tienen que ver con nosotros haciendo algo. Y los normal verbs son las acciones que nosotros realizamos, las acciones que estamos llevando a cabo. Then we have the last one, that is to wait. That it says, the table waits a lot. Again. It's something else. The table waits a lot. La mesa pesa mucho. No estamos haciendo nosotros la acción. Es que la mesa pesa. Y es una realidad. No es algo que nosotros estemos haciendo. And then she is weighing herself. En este caso, ella se está pesando. Está haciendo la acción de medir el peso que tiene. So, and it says that some verbs can be especially confusing. And we have the verb to be. We know that the verb to be is one of the most common verbs that we use when we are talking in English. Because it's like the base of the, uh, the phrases that we are using to communicate with others. So in this case, it can be confusing because of the meaning that we can give to this uh, verb in special. So we have the uh, verb to be, like a non-continuous verb, we have joy is American. In this case, it's not performing an action. So it's saying something about joy. And then joy is being very American. He's doing something to look very American. Maybe he's... Uh, wearing some t-shirts, he is carrying a, a, like a flag or something like that, and, and he is trying to look like very American. Then, Joy is being very rude, he is asking or behaving very rude in this case. And then we have Joy is then very formal, it's acting like someone that is very formal. And then it says only rarely is to be used in a continuous form. It is most commonly done when a person is temporarily behaving badly. Or a, a stereotypical, it can also be used when someone's behavior is not necessarily different, when it's someone doing something different. Now, we are going to continue with the, um, the uses, because we were talking about the uses of the present continuous, and we have just the use number one. And we have that is now, the use is now, the use number one that we have in this document. And it says that use the present continuous with normal verbs. That's why we were talking about the three different types of verbs. So use the present continuous with normal verbs to express the idea that something is happening now. In this very moment, it can also be used to show that something is not happening now. And we have some examples. You are learning English right now or in this moment. You are not swimming now. Are you sleeping? I am sitting. I'm not standing. 
Is he sitting or standing? They are reading their books. They are not watching television. What are you doing? And why aren't you doing your homework? In that case, we're talking about this uh, very moment in, in that we are talking. So the first use is now. Now we are going to see the use number two. But I need to take this one out because I don't like or I don't need this one. But I need my this. Okay. Now, use number two. And this one is a longer action in progress now. So it says in English, now can mean different things. It can mean this second, today, this month, this year, this century, and so on. So it is not like we are going to have just one definition of now. We can have a lot of expression that we can use, and we have like um, a lot of moments that um, we can use the word now. It is not like we are just talking about this precise moment. We are going to talk about now, this year, now, this week, now, this day, and so on. Sometimes we use the present continuous to say that we are in the process of doing a longer action, which is in progress. However, we might not be doing it at this exact second. For example, I am I am going to a meeting now. I'm going to a meeting now, but not in this precise moment. I'm going to a meeting this week. So I have that expression. Así que tenemos como una variante o una, um, un uso bastante variado de la palabra now. Nos puede dar como diferentes momentos en el que podemos utilizar el now como en este segundo, hoy, este mes, este año, este, este, este uh, this century, pero que nosotros vamos a hablar de algo que se va a llevar a cabo, pero que no estamos haciendo en este preciso momento, pero que sí sabemos que está en proceso de poderse realizar. Um, give me a second, I will change the, the connection, the internet connection because it's not working. So give me a second. I think it's going to work. I think, I think, because I'm not uh, connected to my, to my internet that is in my house. I am using my cell phone internet. So we're going to continue. And I know it is working. Yes, of course. Okay. Mm 
Okay, I was saying that uh, in this case, we have different meanings for the word now. The second today, this month, This year, this century, and so on. Sometimes we use the present continuous We are in the process of doing Some examples of this is number two. So we have example number one. I am studying to become a doctor. So we are doing a process to um have that ending right then i'm not studying to become a dentist then i am reading the book tom sawyer Interesting book. Then I'm not reading any books right now. What is something sad? I want to read some books, but I don't have any time. That is something, something complicated. Are you working on any special projects at work? the last one. Aren't you teaching at the university now? So we have the use number two that is longer action in progress and now. The first one is the now, just talking about this precise moment. And the second one is talking about uh, something that we are doing uh, to achieve a goal, to achieve something. Uh, but in some cases, uh, we are not doing right now because we are doing something else, but we are um, continuing doing that um, action in some time in the future, maybe. We have use number three. But in this case, it's near future. A 
And it says, sometimes the speakers use the present continuous to indicate that something will or will not happen in near future. We have some examples of this one. And we are going to see. We have the first one, and it says, I am meeting some friends after work. Then we have number two, and it says, I am not going to the party tonight. Then we have number three, he's visiting his parents the next weekend. Oh, in this case, is he, is he visiting his parents next weekend. And number four, isn't he coming with us tonight? They use number four. And it says repetition and irritation, which with always. So in this case, it says the present continues with words such as always or constantly express the idea that something irritating or shocking after happens. Uh, notice that the meaning is like simple present, but with negative emotion. And we are going to use the word always or constantly between B and B, I and D. Para este eh, número cuatro, dice que eh, siempre tenemos que utilizar el always o el constantly eh, para referirnos a esta estructura. Y que expresa una idea que algo eh, es como irritante o... Eh, sí, es como algo que nos irrita, ¿verdad? O, o que nos eh, emociona, pero no de una buena manera. Su, eh, su meaning, su, su, su significado, se parece mucho al del sim, el presente simple, pero tiene una emoción negativa, no es una emoción positiva. Y siempre vamos a poner always and constantly entre el verbo to be, dependiendo de la persona que estemos utilizando, y el verbo con su forma ing.
So we are going to mark this one. That is to remember that we are going to use always or constantly between the verb be and the ing form of the verb. So we have some examples. And we have number one. Let's see? It says she is always coming to class late. She is always coming to class late. Then we have number two. He is constantly talking. I wish he will shut up. In this case, we are using also the uh, structure of the wish. And in the third one, I don't like them because they are always complaining. So in this case, remember that these ones are just with a negative connotation. Um, in this case, it's talking about a negative emotion, something that we don't like, something that is irritating. So we have these three examples in which we have the number one, that is she is always coming um, to class late. That is something that we really don't like about people, that is like coming late to some places. Then we have his constantly talking. I wish he will shut up. In that case, something that is kind of angry with someone because it's all the time talking, saying things. And the number three, I don't like them because they are always complaining. They are just uh, giving the negative emotion about uh, some topic. Now, we have some tips to use this uh, present continuous. And in this case, that we need to remember that a non-continuous verb or a mixed verb. Uh, so we need to, to remember that non-continuous verb cannot be used in any continuous tense. Also, certain non-continuous meanings for mixed verbs cannot be used in continuous uh, tense. Instead of using present continuous with these verbs, you must use simple present. Esta parte del non-continuous verbs y de los mixed verbs ya los explicábamos eh, ayer y en parte hoy. En donde estábamos diciendo de que estos non-continuous verbs no lo podemos utilizar con ninguno de los eh, tiempos que llevan esta estructura del continuo, o sea, todas aquellas que llevan ING. Y ya teníamos más arriba la lista de verbos que eh, no podemos utilizar con las estructuras continuas. Y también que hay que recordar que algunos mixed verbs que ya tienen ese significado de el non-continuous verb, tampoco lo vamos a utilizar con el ing. Para ese caso vamos a utilizar más que todo el presente simple. So we have two examples. Number one, she is loving this chocolate ice cream. She is loving this chocolate ice cream. We cannot say it like that. She is loving. No lo podemos utilizar porque básicamente no es eso lo que necesitamos para nuestras oraciones. En este caso vamos a decir, she loves. She loves this chocolate ice cream. No podemos utilizarlo con el ING en este caso. Then we have adverb placement that it says that the examples that we are going to write show in which place we are going to write the adverb. Let me minimize this. Okay, we have the adverb placement. So we have some examples in which you are going to see um, 
what kind of adverb we have. We have here always. We have also only. We have a never, ever, feel, just, etc. So in this case, we have some examples. We have your steal, what seems to be, and we have a question, I just feel, what seems to be. So uh, in the place that we are going to use, the adverb is between the verb to be in the normal sentences, uh, between the verb to be and the verb with ing. In the case of the question, we are using uh, the verb as the first word. In this case, we are going to use the adverb between the pronoun and the verb to be, but it's almost the same place in both. Then we have some specification about the active and passive uh, uh, phrases that we are going to use. In that case, uh, when we are talking about active and passive, it's like we are going to talk about another topic that is kind of long. Because in that case, we are just saying that um, the active form, uh, when we are using a sentence, so we are saying that the thing doing the action is the subject. And the thing receiving the action is the object. Cuando hablamos de voces pasivas, voces activas, solo vamos a hacer una pequeña explicación sobre eso porque es un tema un poco largo y complicado. Eh, estamos diciendo que quien realiza la acción es el sujeto. Eso va a ser nuestro sujeto de la oración y el que recibe la acción que nosotros estamos haciendo es el objeto. Es como el típico, la típica oración que nosotros siempre utilizamos. Es como, Tom is writing eh, for his students. Tom está escribiendo para sus estudiantes. Tom está haciendo algo, los estudiantes están recibiendo lo que Tom está haciendo. Y es kind of eh, easy to understand. But in the passive form of the passive voice, in this case, it's like we are going to change and the object that is receiving the action going to be the subject of our uh, sentence. And in some cases, we are not going to add the subject, that in that case, it's not necessary. Para la forma pasiva, pues, vamos a cambiar y vamos a dejar nuestro objeto, el que era nuestro objeto, que era el que recibía eh, la acción, lo vamos a dejar como el sujeto, de la oración y en muchos de los casos no vamos a escribir el sujeto que ya teníamos porque no es necesario o ya lo podemos incluir a través del de contexto de la oración o no es tan necesario que nosotros podamos eh, escribir el sujeto. So I'm going to write just because we are almost done with this uh, session. I'm just uh, want to write uh, the structures or the present continuous that are the formulas and some rules that we need to take into consideration uh, when we are using these tens. And it will be the last part of the present progressive. Estamos a punto de terminar la sesión. Solo le voy a escribir las formulas del positive negative question. Some rules for the um, for the present continuous, and we are going to end the session because we have like two minutes, I guess. So we are going to write the formula. And we have a positive. We have a negative. I mean, we have negative and we have question. So for the, the positive one, we have the following structure. We have the subject. 
plus if and are, depending on the person that we are using. If um, and are, plus the, the verb with ing for. And plus the complement. Later, we are going to write some examples. Then we have the negative one, and it says that we need the subject again, plus is an um, MR. In this case, we're going to use a not, plus a verb with ING form, plus complement. And for the question, we are going to change the um, the order. And in this case, we are going to have is, um, or at the beginning, plus the subject, plus verb with ing form, plus the complement and the question mark. Okay. Now, because I need to separate it. Okay. And uh, we are going to write the rules and at the end we are going to write the example of the sentences. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six rules and one example for each rule. So I'm going to add, let me see if I can find that. Okay. In this place, I need to insert the table, which I need to have the rule, the example, like this. So we have here the rule and we have here the example. Rule number one, action happening right now. And we have the example. The stars are twinkling. Number two, to describe the planet action. And we have the example. I'm taking my final exam. I am taking my final exam. Number three, to describe someone's routine. We have the example. He's studying in the library. Number four, to describe the recurring act. And we have the climate is getting hotter every year. Number five, announcements in media, television, radio, or newspapers. The 
the government is trying to reduce the virus cases. In the last And the last rule to state a future event that is already arranged. So in this case, we have some examples of the rules or the um, the cases in which we are going to use the present continuous, and we have that we are going to use this structure for actions happening by now uh, to describe the planet action that we have or someone have um, to describe someone's routine or something that is doing in this moment. Um, to describe the recurring acts about the world, and it's not like we're going to just talk about uh, ourselves, uh, announcements in media and television, radio, or newspapers, and to state a future event that is already arranged. So we are going to write the examples in the structures or the formulas that we have here, but I need to move this one because I want it in the next page. So here, and we are, going, we are going to write some examples of these structures. That is the last part. So we have simple, simple um, sentences. We are not going to create complicated sentences for these um, examples. So we have number one, I am walking. Then she is talking. Then we have he is laughing. Then we have it, it is raining. They are singing. We are cooking. And then you are smiling. So we have the structure for the positive one. Now we are going to write some example for the negative one. And we have here the example. I am not walking. That is the same sentence. So we have the negative ones, and for the last one, we have the question. Uh, 
And the face is she. And the last one, are you smiling? So we have the three um, structures with its examples. So we have a positive, a negative, and a question. In that case, we are not going to create complicated sentences. So we have a um, complete this topic tomorrow we are going to see another a uh, topic that has to be with structures and grammar and we are going to have just more two more sessions uh, to end this uh, course so we are going to have two more days and we are going to see each other tomorrow so have a really good night and we are going to see um, each other in the session number three of this week number four so goodbye and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.